Welcome, guys. Welcome to uh, Classic Sunwrap. David, if I can come to you first of all, where have you just flown in from? We flew from uh, Japan. We had a few days break in between uh, the Southeast Asia, Japan leg, and here. Um, so we're all a little bit on uh, a completely different time zone, trying to catch up with ourselves. Tell us a little bit about uh, Amor y Pasión. We've brought in so many new elements that people have been asking for over the years, and which like we've been thinking. Well, first of all, we sing solos, we play instruments, we have dancers on stage with us, and we're dancing. And it's just the whole show is so beautifully flowing with all that Latin repertoire. And it's so, with all these elements I've just mentioned, you know, there's so much light and shade in it. It's very entertaining for us to do and definitely also for the public to watch. Now, you talk about that Latin element. If I can ask Carlos, tell us about the, the repertoire itself. Who, who decided the repertoire for this uh, CD? Yeah, the tour? repertoire started about uh, near two years ago. We had a... Uh, uh, we were singing on a TV show in Spain, and then we, we spoke to the, to the Spanish record company, we should do something in, uh, with Latin music. So, so we just put uh, a really long list forward. It was about 300 songs. And then we just, we just went to the studio, and uh, we just recorded with, uh, with Julio Reyes. And, uh, he's from Colombia. Yeah, 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 he's from Colombia, a very well-known uh, producer. And, um, and then, uh, yeah, we just, we just recorded about uh, yeah, 20, 30 songs, and then we chose the, the 11 best songs. That was quite difficult, but, but it's fantastic. We put it out to our, our many listeners in Classic Soundmap to, to send in their questions for Il Divo. And uh, just along that line, we had uh, Gillian Reed Watts asked on Facebook if you'll be making a DVD of the new album, David. It's, it's a topic that's certainly under discussion at the moment, right. um, but at the moment uh, we have yet to uh, nail that actually down, but we certainly want to. So watch this space, that's what you're saying. Yes, absolutely, keep tuning in. Urs talked about the fact that you're, you're all playing instruments uh, in this. Now, David, I saw that you have actually learned the bandoneon yes. for this tour. Now, when did you start learning and, and just how difficult is that wee button box? You know, I have a little bit of experience with instruments. I play a little bit of guitar, a little bit of piano. Uh, my first instrument when I was younger was uh, learning the trombone. All of these instruments have absolutely no they don't even rate on the scale of difficulty when it comes to the bandoneon because there's no, there's no frame of reference on it. It's, it's not like an accordion where one side is actually piano keys and you know some sort of familiarity. Both sides are uh, all just buttons and they're randomly arranged. There's seemingly no pattern. I even, I even when we were rehearsing the tour down in Mexico, I got a teacher down there and I said, now look, I've not been able to figure out the pattern. What's the pattern? He said, there's no pattern. <laughs> You just have to learn each button, and it plays a different note when you pull it than when you push it. Well, good for you for doing that. <laughs> uh, Sebastian, if I can ask you, please, um, uh, what else uh, in this, in this uh, production, as well as the playing, there's a certain amount of dancing. Now, not all singers are known for their dancing. Two left feet, many of us have. Uh, how have you found that um, transition into hoofing? You know what? For me, actually, it's always been a passion of mine just to learn about dancing and probably had two left feet but had to learn that i had two feet that were a right one and a left one and, and you got to do tangos and that's no, right, salsa. Mambo, salsa there's all different sexy dance to uh, to our music each and every one of us is having a lot of fun and during the rehearsals in mexico uh we've had a tremendous well my fun. wife is from mexico and she'll, she'll always say you know when it comes to that sort of latin rhythm you have to ask a latino so i'm going to ask you how how was the latin um Rhythm. It wasn't bad at all. I mean, we, we, we had a very good teacher. I mean, uh, Alex Gerobles is the choreographer, and he had uh, done a fantastic job with us. I mean, uh, yeah, we, we looked like real dancers. We look like, but, uh, but, but I don't know if we really dance <laughs> smoke properly. And smoke and mirrors, smoke and mirrors. We were asked, um, Yoko Rosa, who I think saw you in Japan, she was asking about uh, how you recuperate after a show with all that singing and dancing. How on earth do you sort of recharge the batteries? Urs. It's, it's a difficult question, you know. The problem is that normally after the shows, because you're on adrenaline, you can't really go to sleep. So you don't go to sleep until 2, 3 a.m. And when you don't have an early flight, then that's okay, you know, then you can have a lie-in till midday. But if you have to get up at 8 again and catch an early flight to go to the next venue, then it becomes wearing. It becomes wearing. I would say, you know, when we do a year-long tour like this, 
by the end of it, I feel like a jack in a box. I feel like the tour manager is just putting me in a box. He's shifting me over the planet. And at 8 o'clock at night, saying, come on, sing. And then I go back into the box. And then he's shifting me to the next city. It's kind of, it gets to that point where it's really, you just travel and sing. And you travel and sing. And we still enjoy the singing very much. But the rest of it gets quite tiring. Il Devo, thanks for joining us in Classic Sunroute.